you're failing because you're working at 10%. How am I working at 10%? I am showing up from Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. for rehearsals and I'm doing the best I can. That is the crap that this theater school was pulling. They proceeded to tell me that I need to find a different industry because um, I'm not an actor and I never will be an actor. When I graduated, I actually didn't do acting at all because I was so abused, I was so traumatized, I was so hurt. That's my theater school story. One, two, three, let's switch this up. Hello my little honeys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Anastasia, also known as your fave social media girl. Before this video ends, please don't forget to subscribe and of course, don't forget to turn on the bell notification button so you know every single time that I post, which is on Fridays. Quick little announcement honeys, I am doing something new, kind of just building sort of my career building sort of a bit more of like my YouTube kind of platform and like the success in it and whatnot. And I wanna offer something for you honeys. So I'm gonna be offering consultation sessions primarily for um, the acting and whatnot. Just even like if you wanna talk about like life in general, you're a little lost in like the industry and all that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna go into like, into the pricing and all that kind of stuff. Email me, we can talk about things, we could do it over Zoom. I'll sort of kind of give you depending on what you're looking for, I'll help you out as much as I can. I will link my email address down below in the description box. I will have a professional website up really soon. I'm working on that. It's just going to take a couple of weeks to get it all finalized and whatnot. So once that's done, essentially, I would just be linking the website. And then from there, you can sort of book me for a consultation session. So that is the announcement. I will be doing consultations at the moment. Email me down below. Let me know what you'd like to uh, meet for and then we'll do it over Zoom and I'll be very happy to help. <clears throat> oh my God. I'm about to go down a big loophole and open up a massive can of worms about my theater school and what it was like, the trauma of it, what I went through for the four years. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I felt like every time I wanted to do it, I wasn't ready. I wasn't doing it for the right reasons. And I feel like now I'm really coming from a good place. I'm not coming from a place of like anger and wanting to essentially shit talk. Like that's not what I'm doing here. And I don't know, I just felt like in theater school, they always wanted us to sort of like be what they wanted us to be, not be yourself. And I felt like my four years, I've been lying to myself. I felt like I was an actor that lied. I felt like I was never being me in my theater school. I never felt like I wasn't even allowed to be me. I couldn't really play the character with my personality and who I was. And I felt like that's kind of where my fake acting came through. And I had a hard time getting out of it because I thought that that was what acting was. So this quote really resonated with me because acting is you it is an aspect of yourself that's how it always is you know okay let's get into um a big video you can tell that i'm a little nervous because i can't stop touching my hair i can't stop like looking everywhere else besides the camera primarily the reason i wanted to do this video was i want to create an awareness of trauma and theater schools and this old style of learning they have that really is not working and I don't think it ever worked. When you leave theater school, it's like nobody talks about what the hell just happened in the last four years. Like nobody talks about the abuse and the toxicity and the manipulation you went through. And it's like almost like you think that that's normal and that's okay. Yeah, I just want to talk about it. I want to be honest because I've mentioned a lot about my four years of theater school were not amazing. And I did a lot of therapy and I even had to quit acting because of it because I, first of all, was so broken. And there's no way I was able to do acting on that level. And two, I didn't even know what acting was. I left that program. Well, I graduated that program and I felt more lost than I did when I was 18 going into a program. And I think that says a lot about the stigma of theater schools and the bullshit that they put you through. A bit of a disclaimer before I start this video. This is not painting a picture about every single theater school. This is not painting a picture of what it is going to be an experience for every single person. I just want you honeys to know that. Some people honestly actually had an amazing experience. I have friends that I still keep in touch with from my theater class that absolutely love theater school, that love the teachers that I had issues with. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I have nothing against that. I wish I had the experience that they had. I wish I would want to go back to theater school and do it all over again because it was that amazing. But that wasn't the case for me. I'm just 
clearly, just purely speaking from what happened to me, how it went, how I felt, what I did about it, and where I am today after what has happened. So a little bit of basics. How did the program work? It's a four year program. You're roughly in with about 20 to 30 students. You start off with more students. So I think we started off with like 30 or 31 or something like that. And the first year is known as the big probation year. So every semester at the end of the semester, you would have a meeting with all the professors um, of every single department that you've had and they essentially sit you down. It's like quite nerve wracking because you come into a room, there's like a chair, the only single chair available and they're all sitting in this like semicircle with their notes, legs crossed and they're all like, so we're gonna talk about your semester. That's kind of what the first year is like. I think after the first year, we had about seven, I think, or eight students that were on probation, which means in second semester, they essentially, quote unquote, need to prove themselves that they belong in the program in order to be continuing on for the next four years of the program. So to say that it is a very competitive program is very true. You have class from Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, depends on the year. In the beginning, you only have class Monday to Friday. I think in second semester or first year, then you have class Monday to Saturday because Saturday is always a rehearsal day. Classes are roughly from 9 a.m. till literally 9 or 10 p.m. Imagine this, you are in a program literally from September till April with 20 to 30 people, you will have class six to seven days of the week for about 12, like 10 to 12 hours of the day. You will see the best of the people and you will see the most absolute worst of the people. You will not have friends with anyone else besides the program. It sounds really screwed up, but it was also actually really fun. Like with my class, I did have a good time. I made a lot of good memories. Three of my best friends from theater school are still my best friends today. So taking that in, you can already kind of understand just the dynamic that you have with everybody and sort of the pressure that you're constantly on and the stress and the amount of work is put in. You rarely have a day off because the one day that you have off, which is Sundays, would be literally your groceries, your laundry, and your homework, and then that's it. My overall four-year feeling, um, it's just was... I'm really tapping into a lot of stuff that I um, have healed but i also have really put away um because it was very hurtful i do believe even probably some moments i've blocked out because of how bad they have been so i am going to be unlocking a lot of things that i may not want to unlock but it'll be good for me because it's something that i've wanted to talk about on my channel for a while but the four years just seemed so fake and so competitive and so pushy and just so like not authentic. I just felt like in this theater school, you could never be yourself because if you were yourself, you're not like, you're just not, not meant to be there. Like that's just how I felt it was for me. I was really different in theater school. I used to have the Miley Cyrus haircut, like shaved head with like the cool, like, you know, like like I was just very I was very different and I was exploring myself I was exploring who I was I was exploring my style my sense of like fashion and what I enjoyed all that kind of stuff and I think you're supposed to do that when you're in university like that's the best time is to really get to know yourself and make mistakes and all that kind of stuff and I felt like my four years I was always constantly judged by the professors for being different the environment that they always created was really intimidating because even though you all have to audition for roles in the theater school, it does not matter. You always knew who was going to get the lead role, always, because it was always the same person. It doesn't matter how hard you try. It does not matter how much you try to audition. The worst part is, is that I'm paying this theater school to learn. I'm literally giving money to the university to learn how to become an actor. And yet my four years, I think I only ended up getting one lead role. I just felt like the four years, there wasn't a lot of room for growth. There wasn't a lot of room for exploration of who you were. I felt like it's very what they wanted. I think also the way they viewed the industry was so old school where I'm like, this is like 1920s crap. Like nobody does this anymore. Nobody thinks this way. So what exactly happened to me? So I came from a musical theater background. I did a lot of musical theater in my community theater 
and I did a lot of musical theater in high school. So musical theater is one thing. It's a different style of acting. It really takes a lot to be a specific musical theater actor. When I came into theater school, I was very lost because I was like, oh, what is this style of acting? I'm being over the top and being extra. I learned in my first semester the natural style of like being within yourself and not you know having to always be so big and so loud and have big like hand gestures and emotions so that was definitely a challenge for me in a transition after my first year first semester i didn't feel much yet i think it was way too soon for me to understand like what was actually happening it wasn't until first year second semester we went in we met this teacher and they were um I'm going to say it, they were a bully. I believe that they bullied a lot of the students, whether some of these students believe it now or not. I don't know what it was about this teacher that did not like me and that did not even want to help me, but it was a really tough year and a tough semester, I should say. It was scene study, so we were put into groups of four and you work on a scene from a specific play. And I remember I was really struggling. I was really not understanding the character. I was having a really hard time with just acting. I couldn't understand what she was asking me to do. And just everything about it was really tough. And I remember whenever I asked questions, I would maybe made like, I'd be just, she would, she would make me feel really stupid. And I would be really judged on my questions. And I just felt like anything I asked, it's like, how dare I ask that? Like, I should already know the answer, which is funny to me because again, I'm paying you money. So the way I look at it, no offense, but you need to shut up and help me because I'm here to learn. Like, why do you think I'm going to a university program? I want to come out and be successful, not come out and feel more dumb than I already do right now. I felt like with this professor that if you didn't automatically understand what they were saying and how things were, you ultimately were not succeeding. And I had a really hard time. I asked for help many times. I, I've reached out to them. I really asked them to meet one-on-one -on -one being like, I'm struggling. I don't understand the play. I don't understand this character. I don't understand what you're even teaching and asking me to do. Like I knew I was failing. I knew I wasn't gonna do well in the semester. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna be graded well, which I also have an interesting issue with why are we grading acting? You can't grade it, but whatever, that's besides the point. And I knew, I just had a feeling that I was gonna be on probation and um, I was right. She caught me on my way towards one of my classes and I actually even purposely avoided walking around her classroom because I actually felt uncomfortable being around this person. I felt very um, intimidated. I felt very small. I felt very stupid around this professor. And they caught me outside right as I'm about to walk into this classroom. They told me, they're like, you're on probation and you probably already know this because you can tell you did not do well. And then they proceeded to tell me that I need to find a different industry because um, I'm not an actor and I never will be an actor. I was like, when you're talking about probation, it needs to be done in the time when you're supposed to talk about these with other students, or sorry, with other teachers. You can't just pull someone right before their class and then be like, okay, great, have a fun three hour class. And then you're sitting there in there being like, I just found out that I'm on probation. Like it was just such a shit feeling. The actual probation interview came around and it was just awful. Like you, like I said, you walk into this room, they're all sitting there. They all have this like straight face. You all look like, you look like you're about to be told a verdict of whether you're guilty or not guilty. Like it's just so nerve wracking. It's not how it should be. Like you shouldn't be sitting there and literally like I'm about to vomit because you're so terrified of what they're about to say. Like they create this scare factor in this intimidation around probation as if it's like the end of the world for you. I sat there and I was barely could breathe because I, I already knew the answer, but this this specific teacher that already told me that I was on probation then started the conversation by saying that the reason why I was on probation is because of my tomboyness. They never once in this interview judged me for my acting or my acting skills. Never. They told me, quote unquote, that I'm too much of a man to be in the program, that I'm too much of a tomboy, that I prefer to wear jeans and baggy boy jeans than other things. And I'm sitting there being like, I'm sorry, is this a judgment? of me like why are we talking about what kind of jeans i want to wear like why are we even talking about this like this is absurd shouldn't you be sitting here telling me about how like my acting was this and my acting was that not once in that entire probation interview of 20 minutes that they ever ever even say the word acting acting skill acting technique zilch 
It was about my hair, my haircut, how I like to dye my hair crazy colors, how I have a septum piercing and that's not allowed, how I have a tattoo, how I like to wear these crazy jeans, how I'm too much of a tomboy. And that's why I was on probation. I was in a state of shock. I, I'm not gonna lie. I was in a state of shock. I think even the classroom looks at you differently. Like when you find out that you're on probation, I think people actually like don't really wanna be friends with you. I felt that a little bit that after I got on probation, I felt like people were kind of like, ooh, you don't wanna be around, you know, you don't wanna get the probationary as well because I'm gonna hang out with her too much and then who knows, maybe I'll be a tomboy as well. Like it was just kind of weird. I'm not saying that everyone in my class did it, but there were specific people that acted like that. And it also doesn't make it feel good and it makes you feel a lot worse because your class is supposed to be there for you. But unfortunately they create this sort of stigma and even your class kind of turned against you a little bit. Yeah, this is when a lot of my vocal issues were happening, which I'll link the video up above. If you haven't watched it, I do have a medical condition with my vocal cords. So in second semester, I found a lot of crap about them. And then my entire summer I dealt, was in the hospital in and out because of my vocal cords. Yeah, the summer was really tough because not only was I was trying to figure out why I was sounding the way I was sounding and what was wrong with my vocal cords, I was also now going into second year, first semester being on probation. And not only that, we're starting off with Shakespeare and I'm horrible at Shakespeare, just not a good time. Second year comes around, first semester, and they give us the roles in Shakespeare. And this is where things are like, we're just so screwed up with this theater school. They literally give me a role that is more of a masculine role and it has probably max five lines. You literally just told me in my probation interview that I'm too much of a man of a tomboy, masculine, to be in the program. So you go and give me a character that is more masculine. You're literally setting me up to fail. Like, how am I supposed to prove to you that I'm not too much of a man to be in the program when you're literally giving me a character and asking me to put more masculinity to it? And then with my five lines, I understand that no part is small part. I get that, I really do. But when it comes to you being on probation and you're really trying to prove that you deserve a spot here and that you are capable of doing this, it's really hard to prove something with five lines. I'm not kidding, it really is. Like I was like, should I just leave now? Like I don't even know what to do and I just felt like crap. I stayed because I wanted to prove to them that they're not breaking me, that I'm unbreakable, that I'm capable of doing this, that there's nothing that you can destroy me about. Oh, I finished the semester and it was tough. Like again, um, I'd ask for help, didn't really get much of it. I felt like I was always just sort of shoved to the back. The one thing that I remember saved me at the end of the semester, first semester, second year, during my probationary interview of like whether I'm staying or not, I told them that I'm getting vocal surgery and um, they're like, okay, well, if your voice is gonna change and you will sound more feminine, quote unquote, literally that's what they said, then we'll keep you in the program. So literally the only thing that saved me from not getting kicked out was the fact that I was getting vocal surgery. I never ended up getting vocal surgery because they found another condition that I'm genetically born with and you can't operate on it, you just have to live with it. So when I came back, I told them that and I actually emailed the dean, all the professors, everybody. Not one person, not one person emailed me back to ask me if I was okay, that asked me questions about my medical condition, asked how they can help me and assist me in my rest of my years of my acting. Nothing, not even a thanks for the update, zero. And that really hurt me, that really, really hurt me. Again, like this is an institution that you come to learn in, you come to succeed, and instead you are being literally pushed to the back. Like you are being judged constantly, you are not allowed to be yourself, you are being like, traumatized and abused, the amount of stress you go through, like it was just horrible. I remember they would do these things and they would always, they would always threaten you, like, oh, the threats were so bad. They would be like, you're working at 10%. You're failing because you're working at 10%. How am I working at 10%? I am showing up from Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. for rehearsals and I'm doing the best I can. I remember we had this movement class and that movement teacher was like the worst of the worst. I could not stand this teacher at all. This teacher and I had so many issues. I remember she sent me a letter and she started telling me how my body type wasn't the same as the body types of all the women in the class. Like that is the crap that this theater school was pulling. The rest of the two years, like I, after I got off probation and I never got surgery. It was scene study second semester for second year and I actually got a decent part in the scene and I failed, let me just say that. I failed because I never got a chance in my two years to learn anything. 
that I, when I got this part, I literally was like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. Like, I don't even know how to act. What is even acting? Like, I was so confused. I was so lost. Nobody was like, it was just really tough for me. Granted, that teacher that did that second semester, second year scene study was actually the best teacher I've ever had. That teacher actually listened and she wanted to help me. And I still, to this day, am very thankful for her. And then third year and fourth year, to be honest, I just wanted to finish it. I just wanted to finish it and get my degree. We had guest directors come in and do shows with us and everything. And it was a different experience working with them because they were coming in very unbiased. Just, it doesn't matter though, the teachers still stuck around. There was still this sort of threat. They'd always, I remember that we had this meeting once where they're like, people call us. People call us when they see your name on the booking and they want to know who you are. They'll pick up the phone, they have our numbers, they'll shoot us a call and they say, we want to hire Anastasia. How was she in theater school? And then literally the dean would be like, and we can tell them. You are putting the fear of God into the students who leave theater school, who are literally afraid. And this is why so many people are like afraid to have a conversation with their agents because they'd always tell us, my God, like you can't say this to your agent, can't say that to your agent, can't do this, can you do that? Or casting is like the scariest thing. Like you gotta be perfect in the casting room. You create this like fear of everything. And so when I left theater school, I had no idea how to get headshots. Like no idea, like how to do them, what to do, who to look for. I had no demo, had no idea how to make one, where to get one, what's the best way to do it. Uh, my resume was not created, never taught us how to do any of that. I did not know how to just even start in the real world of acting. I reached out to them for reference letters. I don't know why I did this, but I had to. Not one of them gave me a reference letter, didn't even answer my email. So, yeah. When I graduated, I actually didn't do acting at all because I was so abused, I was so traumatized, I was so hurt from what happened that I did not know what to do. I did not know how to make it better. I had to do a lot of therapy, a lot of healing. I know still some classmates that have went through similar things that I did that I unfortunately never healed. And I don't think they ever will. I don't know if they even want to heal from it. I know they're still scarred. And unfortunately, some of them decided not to even do acting because they were that traumatized and abused by theater school that they literally left the industry. And that was really sad because I was almost one of them. I regretted going to theater school for many years. I don't regret now because there's no reason to regret anything. I did learn things from theater school. I learned discipline. I learned uh, tight scheduling. Like I learned things. And I'm grateful for what, what I went through in theater school because I think me going what I went through in theater school, I mean, hey, I have a YouTube channel now where I help other actors that are probably going through some rough crap in this industry as well. And I'm happy to help because that's what I wanna do. I wanna help people. I wanna create an awareness about theater school that if you went through a traumatic four years or three years or however long your theater school was, if you went through trauma in your theater school, that it is okay. You are not alone and the stigma in this industry is changing and so is theater schools they really are trust me i know this theater school is changing because there's a no whole new professors they're all young and new and fresh off the boat there's a new dean that's really good and it's different now it really really is so that's my theater school story it was a lot <laughs> And I'm happy where I am now. I'm happy at the stage that I'm in. I'm grateful that I'm sitting here and I'm able to talk about it. And I'm also proud of myself. I didn't even cry because I have nothing to cry about. I have nothing, like I have no tears that want to come out of me because I've already cried a lot and enough about theater school, you know? And I'm just happy that I'm an actor. I'm happy that I have a successful agent. I'm happy that I have a great relationship with acting. And I'm happy to be in this industry with the right mindset and that I've healed we've come to an end. And I also want you to know, please don't not go to theater school because of hearing this experience. Like I said, a lot of students still did have a wonderful experience in my theater school and even in my class. So it does not mean that you will have a bad one, but do not ever, ever, ever let yourself be put down by a professor, a teacher, or someone in the professional industry ever. They do not validate you, you validate yourself. Okay. You do not let anyone talk to you unprofessionally, inappropriately, or, in any sort of harassing way. You don't ever let that happen. You are a fantastic actor. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to fail and make mistakes. That's the only way you are ever going to learn. Honeys, I love you. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you have any consultation stuff you wanna talk about, my email's down below. I love you all. 
and I'm gonna see you all next Friday. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Bye, honeys.